The sad thing is that even though truth is so important, oftentimes the more we learn, the more we're like, oh, no, let's bury that. Let's cover that up. Let's not deal with that. Right? And the truth is that we can't do that. We can't do that. Um, and that leads into this next uh, point. <clears throat> Good to Great, and I like this, uh, I like this book, and uh, this, this point is, is specifically, I think, applies to what we're talking about. Um, it says this. <coughs> we need to be brutally honest with each other. We need to be open to truth, but guys, I'll be honest, most of the time, we don't want to be because we don't like what we find. That the truth often is kind of brutal. It's kind of ugly. And so it's easier just to kind of cover it up and pretend it's not there, right? This often is easier to cover up. When this guy's doing this, he's, he's sleeping with the church secretary. When the pastor's sleeping with the church secretary, or there's, you know, there's issues in, in your organization, it's often easier just to be like, no, let's not. That's too, that is too scary to look at, so let's not look at that. And that is just such a danger, guys. Yes, it's going to get a little chaotic being honest with what's going on. But, in the end, as we deal with it, and we're not alone. We have, as, as biblical leaders, as biblical leaders, we have God on our side. He wants to deal in the truth. And think about this, think about this. If Jesus Christ forgives us for our sins, then it doesn't matter how dark the sin is, it is forgiven. So oftentimes what we want to do is we want to, we want to put a wall up, right? And we want to stay here and we just kind of want to throw all the truth onto that side and we don't really want to deal with it. We want to take that truth even within ourselves as leaders uh, and we want to kind of push it down and pretend it's not there. We don't really want to deal with it. We don't want to let it come to the surface. We don't want to let anyone else know it's there. And guys, as, as we do that in ourselves, it is by our nature to run and hide, right? We saw that in Adam and Eve in the garden. What's the first thing they do after they sin? They put on, they put on leaves, right? They cover up. And then what do they, do they go do? They run and hide, right? They run and hide in the bushes. It is, that shows us our nature. When the truth gets ugly... We, we try to cover it up and we try to run away from it. We do that, every single one of us. So as Christian leaders, we're gonna, we have to recognize that, okay, that's my tendency. That's the old nature. That, that's what the father of lies wants to do. But I, I belong to the father of truth. So what that means is I, I need to push towards the truth. And even when it starts getting ugly, even when it's like, man, I don't want anyone to hear this about my family. I never knew that that was going on. Or I don't want anyone to know about this uh, in my church. I didn't know. Oh man, I want to keep that. We want to keep that quiet. Guys, 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 know the father of truth. We want to work towards that. We don't want to cover it up. God wants to break through this. God wants to break through this. Um, you know, oftentimes we, we almost want to apologize to people and be like, you know, I'm sorry that this is happening. I'm sorry that this person shared, you know, shared, shared his, what's going on. Guys, no, 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 we don't need to be, you don't need to apologize that truth is coming out. You don't need to cover it up. You don't need to hide from it. You don't need to run away. What we're called to in Jesus Christ is to deal with it. And the amazing thing about Jesus Christ, that your darkest, darkest, darkest sin and, and most ugliest truth was paid for on the cross. And I'll be honest with us, most of us don't even realize how dark we could be. Right? If, 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 if we lived in a different time, in a different place, in a different family, we have, each of us has the nature to be incredibly sinful. But even that person, even imagine yourself being as incredibly sinful and as incredibly selfish and as like, even if you just thought about what is the worst possible thing I can think of and if I did that, if you did that and you turned to Jesus Christ, he would forgive it. That is the amazing thing about grace in Jesus Christ. And so therefore what we need to do is we need to embrace the reality 
We need to focus on truth and value truth and say, no, 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 I'm not running from the ugly truth. I'm going to run towards it and I'm going to remember that Jesus Christ runs with me. And he wants to deal with that and he can save us from that. And so we don't need to hide. We don't need to protect our outer image. That's going to lead to that, where people who are watching are going to see what's going on anyway, even though we think we're covering up so well, and they're going to be like, they're hypocrites. So as biblical leaders, we need to be open and willing to, 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 deal, with, to deal with the ugly truth. To deal with the ugly truth. Okay, so this is what he says, this, and this is what uh, Collins is saying. Collins is saying to some degree. Uh, the good to great companies display. So he did a whole bunch of investigation on just not. Uh, he did some like investigation on good companies, but then also did this massive like years, years, years research on these absolutely great companies. So these companies that for the last like fifty years have just been better and better and better and better. Like what and, and like really set apart. He says the good to great companies display two distinctive forms of disciplined thought. The first, and the topic of this chapter, is that they infused an entire process with the brutal, their entire process, sorry, with the brutal facts of reality. Uh, when, as in the Kroger case, you start with an honest and diligent effort to determine the truth of the situation, the right the decision often becomes self-evident. I'm going to read that again. Often when you start with an honest and diligent effort to determine the truth of the situation, the right decision often becomes self-evident. Not always, of course, but often. And even if all decisions you do, or sorry, and even if all decisions do not become self-evident, one thing is certain. You absolutely cannot make a series of good decisions without first confronting the brutal facts. The good to great companies operated in accordance with this principle and the comparison companies generally did not. So the ones that did amazing, not just good, but were great, had this idea that you cannot make a series of good decisions without first confronting the brutal facts. Guys, truth is absolutely imperative when we are dealing with leadership. Godly leadership's chief value is focused on truth. There is nothing wrong with pursuing a vision for greatness. After all, the good to great companies also set out to create greatness. But... Unlike the comparison companies, the good to great companies continually refine the path to greatness with the brutal facts of reality. You will never be able to lead well if you are ignoring or unwilling to, to deal with or unwilling to even look for the brutal facts. If you are ignoring the brutal facts, if you are ignoring the truth of your reality, you will never be able to lead well out of that reality, if, if it's a bad one. Okay, so, we have, to be, we have to be just willing to jump into truth. We have to be willing to look at the different situations in, in truth. And guys, this is, what, uh, this is what I think often happens though, okay? Because lots of people say, you know what, no, no, no. We're willing to look at reality. We are. We, we see. And I think a lot of people do see, especially when things aren't going very well. <clears throat> I think oftentimes people are willing to kind of look at the truth, right? And they see the dangers of it, right? People are willing to look at what's going on and go, okay, no, 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 I see that. You know, <clears throat> I look at the situation here and I see what's going on. There's some problems here, right? And so like, let's say uh, your family, things in your family aren't going so well. So let's say it's like slowly down. Or you're looking at your, um, your business and you're looking at your numbers and stuff and things are just going slowly down. Lots of times we're willing to, to go, okay, yeah, something needs to change. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. We're often willing to kind of see those things, the slow decline. But here's the, here's the issue. Here's the issue. The second that you want to change... 
right? The second you want to change something, that's when all of a sudden people are like, no, 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 we can't do that, we can't do that, right? So, so it's, it's funny because people can see this, they can see this, but oftentimes they're not willing to accept this. They're not willing to accept that this is our trajectory. Right? They can see, they can see that they're not, you know, they're not, they're not going up. They're not going up or they're not really staying the same. They can see that. But oftentimes the brutal reality of continuing to go where we're going means we're going to go down and we're but we are too scared to actually make any changes. Why? Because they're scared of this. Right? They're scared of that change all of a sudden just killing whatever's there. And there's, there's some truth there, but the brutal reality is that this, guys, this is what we, this is kind of where brutal reality has to set in. This and this are the same. So a change might be scary because it, it threatens to, to kill whatever you're doing. But the truth is, what's the benefit of doing this for three or even ten more years when this is the outcome. It's the same place, maybe closed. Closed, there you go. Right? So like say if this is a church, so here or here, it's closed. Family, divorce. Right? What if this is divorce? Whether it's here or here, it's still divorce. So it lasted another four years. Who cares? The problem is, is that oftentimes we are, like, we say that we kind of see the issues, but we're not willing to really embrace the brutal reality of what is going on. And so I want to, I want to push us because I think lots of times we, we see this. Okay, that's not, that's not what it's talking about here when we're talking about the brutal reality. Looking at the brutal reality, brutal reality is this. Mom and dad, spiritual leaders, do, are your kids on a direction that you can see in five or ten years from now that they're going to be passionately following Jesus? Right? Are, you're right? Let's see you're right here. Right? I'm going to give you a color. It's going to be red. Moms and dads, red. Are you, we're right here. Are your kids on a path that in 10 years they're going to be passionately following Jesus? Are they on a path where you can tell it's just growing? Or are they on a path where it's like it's not great, but you're too scared to push, you're, you're too scared to do anything because you're scared, right? What are you scared of? You're scared of this, right? That if you push harder, if you, if you make them go to church, if you make them, if you make, if you, if you start, like, they're not going to want to sit down and do devotions with me. I'll just be honest with you guys. <coughs> Most of us see this. We kind of see, as I said, we see the decline. That's not being, that's still not being honest with truth. Right? That's, not, that's not confronting yourself with the brutal reality. The brutal reality is that in 15 years, your son is going to have nothing, to, nothing, 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 nothing at all to do with the Lord. He's not going to care at all. And you're scared. Or that you, you might be in a divorce. And you don't want to push on anything now. You don't want to, because you're scared it's going to make it worse. We're often scared it's going to be worse. But confronting the brutal reality means we look at not just where we are, but where we're going. What's going to happen in 10, 15 years? That's what we look at. And we ask ourselves, okay, are we going in the trajectory going up or are we going down? And if we're going down, then we need to make a change. Right? We need to make a change. And yes, it might go this way, but if we're intentional, if we're praying, if we're seeking the Lord, if we're not walking in fear going, no, I'm just going to let it go. 
If we're seeking the Lord to know, okay, God, what would you have me do? If we're willing to learn, if we're willing to grow, read a book, right? If your marriage isn't going too good, spiritual leader, read a book. I'm going to start, I'm starting, getting off here. I'm getting off. There, there, there's so many people <clears throat> getting off track. Uh, there's so many people where you're like, I want to help you, but you're like, here, read this book. And they're not even willing to read a book. You know, their marriage could be just so rough, but they're not even willing to read a book. And I just think, God, you're not, we're not, we're not by our core searching, pursuing, loving truth. Because the same, we're scared of, of how gross it might look, how, how ugly it is. We need to be willing to pursue truth. And so oftentimes, we, we're going to have to make that change. And guys, by the grace of God, this is so often the case. Let me give you some encouragement. Guys, often, often what brings, like uh, you've seen this before, that kind of, I've, I've talked about it, that how organizations, teams, family, whatever, that we kind of go through stages and then if we keep doing the same thing, we go down, right? And our, that our goal is to make a change about right here so that we, you know, we're just constantly growing, right? I forget the name of this, this, um, this chart in, uh, at this moment, but basically, you know, at, oftentimes, guys, what, what makes these kind of ups is change, even at the church here, we're getting some more people here. What changed? The pastor. Guys, oftentimes when you just, even just making a, a change like bringing in a new pastor, people get excited about change. And so oftentimes we're so scared of change that we don't, we kind of ignore truth. We know we ignore the brutal reality. But the truth is more often than not, changing stuff actually makes things a little bit better for a time, for a time. I think a lot of churches get in the idea or get in this pattern of, um, they're actually kind of, I, I don't know how to draw this very good, but lots of organizations <coughs> uh, end up doing this over time. That they're actually slowly decreasing, but when, whenever there's a change, it kind of goes up, and then it goes down, and then they make a new change, and then they make a new change, and then they make a new change, and it seems like, hey, we're doing bad, better, and so they keep kind of doing better. Some places, this is how they, 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 they function, like some organizations, companies, right? They just, these are changes, and then once that change kind of fades out, they make a new change, and it brings things back up, and then they make a new change, and it brings things back up, right? We see this often in our world. And that's not, that's not better either, I'll be honest with you. Just being in a cycle of change, that we have to change something just so that we can keep, you know, because things are starting to die down, so let's change it. I think spiritually speaking, many of us, use programs in the church and outside of the church just to kind of throw another log in the dying fire. But the power and the presence and the, the fire of the Lord is not really present with us. Okay, I'm getting into the church stuff a little bit more than leadership stuff, but things that we need to be paying attention to, okay? Oftentimes, we're so scared of change that we ignore the brutal reality of what's going on. We're not making honesty and truth our core value. And when we do that, oftentimes what, what, we, what, we, uh, what we gain by not dealing with reality is simply a slower death. It's a slow decline. And guys, that's not any better. That's not any better. So let's be willing to embrace the reality of, of truth. Uh, I was reading uh, through some of these books. I forget which one. Actually, I think it was... Um, oh, boy, I don't remember now. Maybe this one. But uh, it said that so often we don't hire, um, we don't hire and we don't fire fast enough. Specifically, it is, it's saying this, that you see someone that is, you, there's issues, you're like, Ugh. and you know what, you don't want to make that big change though, right? So you just kind of keep putting up, keep putting up. 
and, 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 and it's just slowly dying, right? Instead of saying, nope, I see the brutal reality of what's going on. We need to confront him. We need to confront this person, especially leaders. This happens with leaders all the time, right? Where people just are unwilling to confront the leader in things that they see that are problems. And then sometimes when they do, the person doesn't listen at all, right? Because they're a leader and they're just like, nope, I know what I want to do and forget you, right? And so um, <clears throat> we need to take that step. Confront the brutal reality. Make truth your chief value and deal with the, the, the things that you see that need, need to change. Don't just put them off, right? Maybe read a couple books first. Um, you know, talk about, talk about them. Um, one of the, a great book, a great book in terms of dealing with conflict is this one, Peacemaker. Another one is Crucial, cru Crucial Conversations. Crucial Conversations, another great book in terms of dealing with the truth. Guys, if you're gonna deal with the truth, there's a couple books that I would say you need to read. Number one is Thanks for the Feedback. You need to read that book. Read Thanks for the Feedback. Okay, it's such a great book uh, in terms of dealing with, you know, those hard conversations, giving people feedback. It's dealing with us working out truth. Uh, Crucial Conversations is another one, and this is just an excellent one, an excellent biblical one here, uh, just grounded on the Word of God. How do we be peacemakers for the glory of Christ?